Hey, very good morning. Hello, my lovely Stitchy friends. This is, just like my last video, a very unexpected, very unplanned video. But here I am. This is Mika on Sunday morning, June the 3rd. And I am here to do the Emily C tag. Um, Emily C, Eclectic Possessions, put out a Stitch With Me video last night with a new tag. And it is so much fun. Um, I was lucky enough yesterday evening to be home. I am rarely at home on Saturday evening. But yesterday I was. And first I could catch the live video from Gerald and Caroline and Leticia, which was amazing. And then when I clicked, when I clicked to my subscriptions, I saw that Emily had put out a new Stitch With Me video and that she had 20, yes, 20 questions in the Emily C tag. And as I was listening to it and stitching along with her, I thought, oh man, this is so much fun. I have to do this. And you know what? While we're at it, let's try and do a Stitch With Me video. I've never, won, I've never done one of these. Um, I don't really have the time for it, neither the tools. The angle is a bit weird, <laughs> please excuse that. You are uh, put on a pile of books on the left of me. I don't have a tripod, stuff like that. So um, we'll just wing it and we'll see how it goes. I've never done this before, so I might make a lot of mistakes in my stitching or maybe I will just get 10 stitches in, but we'll see. I am stitching today on Rose Marquee by Long Dogs Handlers. This gorgeous design. It was one of my mania starts and um, I am stitching it on a piece of 28 count Jobelin in light blue. It shows up a bit more purple here on screen than it is in reality. And I'm stitching this with Paradise Garen. This is my favorite shade. It's called Zanshuisje, and as you can see, it's beautifully variegated. Purple, green, teal, blue. I love this thread. This is um, the cotton variety. Um, Joke Trebedenijs, the owner and designer of our uh, local needle workshop, she dyes these colors in both cotton and in silks. And this is the thickest cotton variety. And what I love about this specific thread is that one strand of these is as thick as two strands of DMC. Let me show you, or let me try and show you the skein that I have already started. And because they are so nice and thick, um, I can stitch this piece of 28 count one over two which is just so much more comfortable and which I like a lot. So let's see how this goes. Um, I have loaded my needle and everything is ready to go. My uh, tablet is here safely behind the Q-snap so there will not be a pattern in the picture. I have the, um, uh, the questions on the laptop on my left and what you hear in the background I think you can hear it is a rain noise. Um, I'm not very good with silence. Since uh, about two and a half years I have had tinnitus in my ears and ever since I have a problem with silence. So when I don't have music on or when I don't watch floss tube I need to have something in the background. And this is a lovely um, rain generator. It's by a website called My Noise. If you are like me and you like to have sound in the background, I definitely recommend that. It's called My Noise. And the specific generator that I'm listening to now is one of my favorites. It's called Healing Water. It's a beautiful forest, waterfall, rainy sound with bird sounds. It's just, it's very relaxing. I like it. So, here we go. How am I going to do this? I need to look at my right <laughs> for the design and I need to look at my left for the questions. Question number one. What is your favorite cereal? Oh, I should mention, by the way, these are not stitchy questions. They are personal questions, so they tell you 
well, not very personal, but fun personal questions. It will make us get to know each other a bit better. And I certainly hope that the entirety of FlossTube will do this tag because I think it's fun. What is your favorite cereal? Well, actually, up until a few years ago, I never ate cereal. I have always been a, um, a person... Oh dear, see, here we go already. How do I do this? How do I concentrate? <laughs> I apparently cannot count and talk at the same time. This is going to be a long one, guys. I'm sorry. Up until a few years ago, I never ate cereal. Um, my breakfast is typically a cup of coffee, a piece of fruit, a glass of water, and then I hurry off to work. I am not a morning person, not by a mile. So in the past 33 years of my life, I have perfected my morning ritual so I can do everything that needs to be done within 30 minutes, 25 if I have to, and I have timed everything down to the minute, and that includes a very quick breakfast. But I have discovered that um, some muesli with either berries or strawberries and a bit of yogurt is a perfect, quick, energizing snack when I am home in between work and dance class. So that is my favorite kind of cereal. Question two, what are your favorite pizza toppings? Oh dear, it's morning and I am yearning for pizza now. When Emily was answering this question in her own video yesterday, <laughs> it was about, I think, 10 p.m., 11 p.m. my time, and I got so hungry. I was so tempted to order a pizza, but I have not done it. Ain't I a good girl? My favorite pizza toppings, um, I love meat on my pizza, bacon, ham, salami, um, I love mushrooms, I love slices of paprika or bell pepper, I think you guys call it. I've never understood that. What is the difference between a bell pepper and a paprika? Or maybe it's just tomato, tomato. I don't know. One, two, three. Number three, you're on death row. What is your last meal? Now, I had to think about this one for a little bit. Um, the first thought that popped in my mind, and I'm going to be honest with you guys here, is junk food. I love junk food if I'm honest. I love me some french fries, chicken nuggets, a nice hamburger. Honestly, it's a miracle that I still fit in my clothes. Uh, I love, 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 love junk food. So, you know, if the last thing that I would ever taste on this good earth is a french fry, I would be happy. But then again, I was thinking back to the best restaurant I ever visited. And that is Alexander in the south of Spain. We were there two years ago, I think. Yeah, two years ago. Alexander is a Belgian chef who set up a beautiful, tiny, very exotic, exclusive restaurant in the south of Spain, near Marbella in Andalusia. And um, my parents took us there, Christian and me, and we had a six-course dinner that was just, oh man, heaven on your tongue. So maybe if I really had to choose, if I wanted to go for something special, I would invite Alexander to cook for me and all my beloved while I'm on death row. And because it is a six course meal, you know, I would have a little bit more time. Okay, question number four. It's laundry day. What are your really weird bottom of the drawer underwear? <laughs> um, I am usually a thong person. 
I hope this is not TMI. I don't know where you guys draw the line. I don't find it TMI. I usually always wear thongs. But ladies, as we all know, there are some days in the month where we are a bit more uncomfortable in our own skin. And for some reason or other, in those days of the month, I don't enjoy thongs. And I would rather slip into something with a bit more fabric. So in the back of my drawer, I have some <laughs> really ugly, huge, white, Bridget Jones style granny slips. If you've seen Bridget Jones, you know that uh, Daniel Cleaver, as played by Hugh Grant, is seduced by her skin colored, <laughs> big ass granny pants. I have a couple of those in white. Number five. <laughs> I am going to regret this, aren't I? <laughs> Number five. Who would play you in a movie about your life? This is actually a question that Flosstube has answered for me. In the first two or three videos that I make, if you go back and read the comments, you will see a couple of times that people say, Mika, you look like Liv Tyler. Which is an amazing compliment because she is such a beautiful woman. I don't see it myself, but um, I was very flattered by those comments. So yeah, Liv Tyler. Number six, what food items do you sneak into the movie theater in your purse or man bag? Chocolate, preferably white chocolate. I love chocolate. What is your perfect vacation? Oh, I have been looking forward to this question. And uh, please forgive me, I'm going to put a little bit of fantasy and science fiction in this question. But my perfect vacation, it would obviously be in Spain, which, by the way, I am going to be in exactly a week's time. I'm looking forward to a wonderful two-week holiday in the south of Spain, and I cannot wait. I'm not going to Barcelona, but that will happen later this year. Anyway, my perfect vacation, it would have to be in Spain. And it would have to be on the coast, because I love the Mediterranean Sea. And it would have to be close to Barcelona, but not in Barcelona. And now here comes the fantasy bit, and I'm going to stop stitching for a sec so I can explain. I would imagine a beautiful, luxurious, sea view villa on a patch of private land, let's say a few square kilometers, on the east coast of Spain. I love the east coast of Spain. It's very pretty. It's, it's a lot greener than the south coast. Um... So, you know, complete privacy, no neighbors, no other houses in sight, a beautiful sea view villa with a large pool, all the comforts that you would desire. You would wake up in the morning, have a nice, long, relaxed breakfast, dive into the pool, and then later enjoy stitching or enjoy a good book, which is something that I never get to in normal day life. So I would, you know, I, I do want to have a good book with me on holiday. And then as evening would fall, we would, you know, um, get our beautiful dresses out, our beautiful heels out. And then in this house, there would be a secret little room that you would enter and you would snap your fingers and it would teleport me into the heart of Barcelona where then we would have amazing dinners we would go to the best places in the city the best restaurants night after night and after a dinner I would snap my fingers again and I would be transported to um, my salsa school where I learned to dance salsa those many years ago or we would be transported to my favorite salsa clubs in the city. And then we would dance the night away. We would have the time of our lives. And by the end of the night, when I would snap my fingers again, we would be teleported back to that secret room in the villa where we would enjoy 
you know, maybe a nightcap and then go to bed. That would be my perfect vacation. Oh man. Yes. Yes, please. It's 2018. Why don't we have teleports already? This is taking too long, science. Come on. Question number eight. You're stuck on a deserted island and you can have five things. What do you have? Um, first of all, food. I agree with Emily there. Secondly, water. Because without that, we wouldn't survive for long. Thirdly, stitching, of course. Um, and then next, I imagine that it being a deserted island, there would be no electricity, there would be no Wi-Fi. So I imagine that, you know, it would be useless for me to say my movie collection or my telephone or my laptop. Um, so instead, I'm going to say my entire book closet with all its contents and then finally Emily cheated a bit on this question and said that she wanted a fully equipped tiny house which was perfect by the way so I'm gonna cheat a little bit as well and as the fifth thing fifth item I would bring with me all the people that I love and actually now that I think of it if I would bring with me all the people that I love, I wouldn't need telephones or internet. I wouldn't need it at all. So yeah, those things. Number nine. Oh, wait while I mark off my chart. Here we go. Uh, number nine. If you could have a reproduction style chart with any theme possible, what would the theme be? This was a wonderful question, Emily. Thank you. I thought about it last night and quite quickly I figured I would want a Antoni Gaudi theme. Um, if you've watched my, well, if you've been with me on this Flosstube adventure since the beginning, you've heard me talk about Antoni Gaudi many times. He was the master architect of turn of the century Barcelona. And he is my favorite artist in the world. I love the Sagrada Familia. I love his houses. I love the park. I love everything that he has ever done. And um, yeah, I would love to have a sampler in his style. A sampler combining all the beautiful buildings that he's designed and built. That would be, oh man, that would be amazing. Thank you, Emily. Great question. Number 10, what is your strangest travel experience? Bonus points if you've ever spent time in a foreign jail. <laughs> I have never spent time in a foreign jail, I'm sorry. Um, although I secretly hope some of you have and that will, you know, make for a good story. My strangest experience, I think, I think it would be when we entered Bolivia last September. And I'm also going to leave the needle in for a sec because I just cannot, <laughs> I cannot do this at the same time. Um, when we flew to Bolivia last year, it was the first time that I flew intercontinental. So it was the first time that I was in a big as airplane. And as you know, I hate flying. I do it all the time, but I hate it. I really, really hate it. Um, so... When I saw those 300, 400 people getting into the plane, I remember panicking and, and saying to Christian, how is it possible that this, that this stays up in the air? Oh man, how is that possible? It was just, ooh, I didn't enjoy it. But everything went well. And then when we arrived at the airport of Santa Cruz de la Sierra, we, of course, had to go through customs because we had come from Europe. We flew from Madrid. And there were three lines in front of the customs office. There was a line for Bolivians, nationals. There was a line for other countries from South and North America. And there was a line for Africa and Asia. And that was it. 
there was no line for Europeans. And I remember looking at Christian and saying, uh, so where do I go? Yeah, I don't know. And I looked around me and seriously, guys, I was the only non-Latin person on that flight. Everybody else was Latin. Everybody else was standing and queuing in the Bolivia, uh, in the Bolivia line. And at some point I thought, well, yeah, let's, let's just go. Europe is closest to Asia. It's bordering on Asia. So, you know, let's just go. So there I was with my hand luggage, <laughs> walking past those 300 plus Bolivian people who were all staring at me. And I moved to the front of the Africa Asia line and I was the only one. And the guy at the customs desk was looking at me. He was looking very angry. It was 4 a.m. in the morning, so I think he was not a morning person either. And I remember that he looked at me very sternly, thinking like, what the hell? She is not Asian, and she is definitely not African. And so he called me, and I went to the front, and I was super, super nervous for a second. And then he looked at my passport, and he looked at me, and he looked at my passport again, and he looked at me, and then he just said, enjoy your trip. And that was that. <laughs> that was the strangest thing ever. Question 11. What are you saving money for right now? Um, well, very much like Emily, I am paying off my credit card. Or I should say, I am trying to pay off my credit card debt because all these stitchy temptations are constantly in my way. Um, number 12, what craft would you like to try or get better at? I would like to get better at crocheting, which I learned last autumn and is a lot of fun. Um, I especially would love to learn sewing at some point. My mom sews uh, very well. I've never learned it, but it would be very cool to, you know, just be able to for instance, make your own project bags or um, sew a piece of clothing or uh, quickly repair, uh, you know, clothing that has a tear in it or something has happened to it. I would like to learn that someday. Question 13. If you had to stitch only three designers for the rest of your life, who would you choose? Now, that's not fair, is it? That is... Oh, that is probably the hardest question of this entire tag. Um, number one, Northern Expressions Needlework. I have five or six of her charts, and I love them. I love, love, love them. I could stitch on her stuff for the rest of my life. And every new release that she puts out, I just, I love it. Number two, Heaven and Earth Designs. I love, love the variety and I enjoy full coverage from time to time. I couldn't stitch on that all the time, but I do love it. And as a third one, oh, I am torn between either Ink Circles or the designs by Yoko Trebedenais, the owner of our LNS. So I want to have four. Please, Emily, give me permission to choose four. Because I can't choose between those two. I really can't. <laughs> okay. Um, question 14. Dumbest way you have ever been injured? Oh boy, a lot. Um, very recent example is the injury that's on my finger. Can you see that? Can you see the U shape on my index finger here? I cut myself with a pair of scissors last week. I am such an idiot. I was holding a package and you know, normally when you hold it, you cut like that, right? You cut away from yourself. But for some stupid reason, I held it like this and I was cutting towards myself. And the moment that I thought, Mika, you should not do this, bam, I cut into my own finger. It was bleeding for hours. You know how it is when you cut, you know, when you cut uh, your fingers, right? It bleeds like, oh man, like a river. 
it's healing now but that was just that was just plain stupid and it was pretty painful <laughs> what is number 15 your worst roommate or housemate story um, if I'm completely honest I don't have that story I have never lived with roommates or housemates I've lived with my parents until the age of 20 and then I moved out and from that moment on I have always had my own place I know spoiled little girl um, but yeah I've, I've never had to deal with with roommates luckily for some stories that I hear Number 16, you have unlimited income. What does your dream house look like? Oh my gosh. Well, pretty much the story that I just described you in the story about the perfect holiday. Um, a few square kilometers of private land, no neighbors, no other houses in sight, bordering on the Mediterranean Sea, and then a beautiful, luxurious, Spanish colonial style villa with all the comforts that you would wish for a big pool a beautiful terrace a patio Lovely Spanish tiles and decorum that would be that would be my dream house. I will insert a few pictures here Is that gorgeous or is that gorgeous? I would love to live in a house like that. <laughs> Number 17. What song would you want played or sang at your funeral or memorial? Now that is a question I had to think about for a second. Because in all honesty, I have never considered my own funeral. But then after a few moments, the song that came to mind was a Christmas song by American gospel artist Michael W. Smith. As you know, I am religious, I'm Christian, and his music means a lot to me. And we used to play his CDs a lot when I was a kid. We've been to concerts of his with the family. His music has been a very important part of my life during my teenage years especially. And I love the song All Is Well on his 1989 Christmas album. It's a Christmas song and um, back in the days when I was about 14, 15 I think, my mom sang in a choir and there is a beautiful soprano solo in that song and once she sang it. And I was sitting next to my dad, he was very emotional, he grabbed my hand at some point and he turned to me and he said, Mika, if I ever die, will you please play this song on my funeral? All is well. All is well with me, because I believe that after death our souls go back to our Heavenly Father. And all is well because despite all the horrible things going on in the world, in the end I believe I truly believe that God will make all things new. And that is what I had to think of when you posed this question. Thank you, Emily. You, you brought back very happy memories for me. Thank you. Three more to go. And I have five minutes left on my memory card. What is your favorite board game or card game? Um, I love Cluedo or Clue, as I think it's called in America. I just love, you know, the hinting game. It was the Reverend with uh, the axe in the study, that sort of stuff. And Chris and I still like to play Rummy Cup or Rummy Cube, I think it's called in English. Number 19, who was your first celebrity crush? Ooh, that dates back a long time. I was a huge fan of the Backstreet Boys, especially Kevin, in my teenage years. But before that, when I was about seven or eight years old, I was in love with 
the guy who played Zorro in the um, television series Zorro. I'll put in a picture here. His name was Duncan Raygear. He is older than my dad, so you know, <laughs> I wasn't exactly crushing on the guy himself, but I was definitely in love, madly in love with the character of Zorro. As you can see, my love for all things Spanish and Latin uh, was there at an early age already. It was broadcasted on the Belgian television, which we could receive by cable in our house. And I think it was broadcasted either once a week or every weekday um, in the early evening. So after dinner, I would rush to the TV and I would be glued to the screen watching Zorro on his beautiful black horse in his beautiful black cape. And I imagined that I was Esmeralda and that he was, you know, oh, he was my prince. Yes, that was my first. <laughs> That was my first ever crush at the age of about seven or eight. And then final question, number 20. If you could capture a smell in a candle or perfume, what would that smell be? Oh man, that would have to be the smell of my mom's son. Um, what's it called? Uh, sun protector lotion, sunscreen, back when we were kids. It was, I don't remember the brand, but it was a, a, a big purple bottle. It had some coconutty scent. And I've never seen it any anywhere in the shops anymore. But that scent would remember, would make me remember the lovely summer holidays that we had as kids. It's becoming pretty clear from this tag how much I love summer and sunshine in Spain, doesn't it? So that, and those were the 20 questions. And I think if I look at my chart that I didn't even make a counting mistake, you guys, this was fun. Emily, thank you once again for your wonderful tag. I'm gonna upload this to YouTube. I hope everybody who sees this will join in. These are such fun questions. Let's get to know each other a little bit better. And um, I wish you all a very happy Sunday. Ciao, ciao.